Welcome to this introduction episode zero, where I introduce the five heroes of my Princess of the Apocalypse campaign. Hopefully this will aid you should you wish to continue listening to these narrated write-ups. So without further ado, let's begin. Lady Helfie, fallen Azimar Warlock. Helfie Helmfast is a noble lady from the city of Waterdeep. Born into wealth, she was revered for her unearthly beauty, being one of the plain touched. Although her family had plans to position their daughter into a lucrative marriage alliance, Healthy had other designs on her future. She was already in commune with a greater force, a patron of great power, one who wished to wield Healthy for its own designs. As Healthy's power grew, her interest in the mundane affairs of her family lessened. Her restless teenage years caused great distress to her house until she eventually took to the road following a distressing encounter with a rival noble who wanted to take possession of her. The encounter left the noble dead and Helfi decided to take to the road rather than face the consequences. Her path from the gates of the City of Splendors led her along the long road where she joined a small caravan for safety which was heading for Red Larch and greater adventure. Leilun, Human Warlock Leilun began life as an urchin of Luskan, trying to survive on the scraps of what little food she could find or steal. Life could have gone either way for the Wayfish girl, before she was kidnapped by a mysterious traveller and taken to Waterdeep to begin a strange apprenticeship called thief-taking. Over many years, Leilun learned the skills to find and capture men and women wanted by the authorities, and her mysterious patron, a man of undeterminable years, seemed to get a kick out of developing the young girl's skills. As the seasons passed, Leilun carried out her trade more and more independently, spending time with her patron more infrequently until, without any notice, he was gone, leaving only a strange note comprising of a prayer to Saloon and the possibility that they will meet once more. Since that day, Leilun adopted the moon goddess as her guide, a shining light in the darkness. In time, Leilun grew bored of the City of Splendors. She needed more excitement than to incarcerate the unworthy. Saying a prayer to Saloon, she left her modest rooms and took to the road, joining a caravan heading to Red Larch and seeking the unknown. Quirky, rock known cleric of Nebelin. Quirky was always the quiet and unassuming type. Some would call him a do-gooder, but those who knew him knew you underestimated him at your peril. Quirky was skilled and sharp-witted and he helped those who traveled the Sword Coast with good deeds and free healing. As he passed through little known villages he would help farmers repair equipment and make intricate toys for young children. Quirky's name became synonymous with kindness and he was content. This changed when Quirky dreamed of a darkness, a threat. The lands of the Desrin Valley were ablaze and then flooded and then torn asunder. The gnome woke in a sweat and wondered what Nebelin was trying to tell him. He searched for his holy symbol in the dark and by accident, or a strange twist of fate, knocked over his unfinished cup of ale onto the floor. The liquid looked red in the near dawn light and ran like the branches of a tree along the floorboards. Without a second guess, the gnome knew that he was needed in Red Larch. What he would find there, he could not know. Joe Dargo, Tabaxi Rogue. Jodago lived in the wilds of Mastica, and his favourite pastime was testing himself against the beasts of both the forests and its settlements. If there was a dispute, Jodago was there. If there was a fight, Jodago would finish it. His skills with blades became quite legendary until he took things a little too far one night and had to make his excuses and leave quickly. That said, Jodago was not the most independent of cats. Over the years, he had formed a strong relationship with his cousin, Moeza. When it was time to leave town, he wanted Moeza to join him. When Moeza asked where Jodago 
wanted to go, Jidago just replied, anywhere. Moeza tossed the coin and smiled, pointing at the ship in the harbour about to sail for Waterdeep and the strange place the newcomers called the Old World. Moeza, Tabaxi Ranger. Probably the most mercurial of creatures, Moeza lives in his own world. Although he has always been fascinated with nature and the way of things, his happy-go-lucky spirit has meant that he is never truly in charge of his own destiny, and this suits Moeza fine. Never too far away from his hand is a coin, which he tosses to conclude every binary decision he has to make. He would have made a fantastic swordsman, but the coin chose the bow, and he was just as a fantastic at that. So when his cousin, Jodago, sought him out that fateful evening in a Mazdakan port, asking him to leave for safety, he gleefully put both their fates into the hands of Time Horror, putting them both on a vessel for Waterdeep. As they stepped off onto a strange world attracting strange looks, they quickly knew the hustle and the bustle of the city was not for them. However, Timora's luck was never far from Moeza, and a human loading wagons from the ship approached them about hiring them as hands for his caravan trip to the north. With another toss of the coin, they were soon sitting on a wagon as they left Waterdeep to head up the long road. As you can probably tell, these five characters were destined to meet each other on the road and form the beginnings of a friendship. By the time they reached Red Larch and heard of rumours in the town and the possibility of more lucrative and interesting work, they abandoned the caravan and sought a life of adventure together instead. Thank you for listening to this introductory episode of my Dungeons and Dragons group as they make their way through the Princes of the Apocalypse campaign setting. Watch out for further episodes where we shall learn their fate as they seek what is happening in the Desterin Valley, the Sumber Hills and in Red Larch itself. <laughs>